My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job, not just to entertain, but educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. If the consumer's in such great shape, as I keep saying, then how the heck can I keep pulling for a rate cut? Why do we need a rate cut? On a day where the Dow gained 50 points, this would be declined 0.05%, NASDAQ dipped 0.36%. I think this is an important question, especially given the Fed's yearly Jackson Hole confab that's getting wall-to-wall coverage both today and tomorrow on our network. As the consumer, well, let's just say, what do we know about the consumer? Consumer shops at Watch, which is my acronym for Walmart, Amazon, Target, Costco, and Home Depot. What do we know about the consumer at these stores? Doing quite well. We know the unemployment rate's at its lowest level in 40 years. So why in the world is President Trump trying to hector the Fed into cutting interest rates? And why do I believe in the president? Because it's not that simple, people. As I explained last night, we've got two economic worldviews colliding here. You look at these big retailers, and it seems like business is booming. You look at what's happening in the rest of the world in the bond market, and it seems like we're headed into a recession. I think the former worldview is more accurate. I think it's smarter, and more intelligent, and more rigorous than to say the latter. But there is some truth to the slowdown thesis. So on the eve of the big Fed Jackson Hole powwow, the bear case deserves a very good hearing. First, let's take the obvious. What we should do is use the words of the, um, use the, words of the chosen one, the king of Israel, also known as President Trump. He said point blank, we'll have to take some pain in the trade war. The house of pain. If we want to get China to change its unfair practices. The economy may be in good shape now, but if we keep getting more and more tariffs, it could deteriorate. In that case, the Fed needs to cut rates as insurance, bring our short-term interest rates closer to the rest of the world. It seems pretty reasonable to me. Why are they disagree with me? Trump stock. Why are they saying against this? They know nothing! They know nothing! They know nothing! In other words, they think that I just like it because I want the stock market to go up, and I'm worried that they don't understand things. We know that China is slowing, right? That's important. And while that's good for us in terms of winning the trade war, it's terrible for the global economy. When you adjust for inflation, these numbers we're seeing from China, I think they're downright alarming. The tariffs are devastating them, and that devastation is spreading to their other trading partners, especially Europe. Speaking of Europe, the U.K. seems to be in big trouble, but we don't talk about it enough. Hard to imagine how they avoid going into a nasty recession if they can't take a hard Brexit off the table. We got some positive chatter about the negotiations today, but I, these issues just seem intractable to me. And it's not just Brexit. The German economy is shrinking. They've got negative interest rates. People are literally paying the German government to take their money. But because they're so in love with austerity, they refuse to take advantage of the situation. The French economy is barely growing. The eurozone growth as a whole was up just 0.2% in the last quarter, if you can call that growth. When you look at the European bond markets, they're screaming recession. And I actually believe that. Of course, this is all happening overseas. Can we shrug off this worldwide weakness? I wouldn't bet on it if I were the Fed. A year ago, we had synchronized global growth. Now we have a global slowdown where the United States seems to be the rare exception. The Fed should make sure it stays that way. Sure, we had the lowest jobless rate since 1969, but you know what? I'm old enough to remember that we had a recession in 1969. The problem with the labor market is that it will look good right up until the moment it gets very, very bad. What about watch, though? I mean, isn't watch represent the country's spend? Well, while these big retailers are doing great, they're crushing their less agile competitors. They can't afford the technology. They can't eat the uh, tariffs like these guys did. It could be a lot of layoffs coming from the ailing department stores and from smaller, less capitalized businesses. They can't handle the tariffs on Chinese goods. And you know what they do? They have to close their doors. Then there's Boeing, a company that's large enough to uh, affect our gross domestic product. Some people say as much as a half a percent. Uh, all by itself. If the 737 MAX assembly line gets shut down because of these accidents, that could shave half a percentage point of our GDP, according to the work I've done. 
Housing should get stronger now that mortgage rates have plummeted back to earth. But when I listened to that Toll Brothers luxury home builder call the other day, I wasn't exactly reassured, frankly. Maybe people are going to Home Depot to renovate their existing homes, not to fix up new ones. The latest housing starts numbers, frankly, anemic. Then there are all those aggregate, indicate, uh, in aggregate indicators that I follow because I'm a geek. Uh, lumber down 50% year over year. Natural gas is so cheap, you have to wonder if there's a slowdown in manufacturing and not just a surf of the stuff. By the way, they're giving that stuff up, too. Uh, they just give it away or they burn it. Car loads per train are down. Liner board, that is the, the kind of thing that you uh, get an Amazon packaging. Uh, chemicals, they're falling. Freight costs are going down big. There isn't a commodity I follow that's going up in price unless you count gold. Some of that's because the auto market's in rough shape and lots of the stuff goes into cars. So maybe we can keep chugging along here, aided by low long-term interest rates, courtesy of the weakness in the EU. Maybe our economy will be just fine, but maybe it won't. And if you're the Federal Reserve, do you really want to take that chance? One reason we're in this position is that the Fed tightened too aggressively late last year. Really stupid move. Given all the pessimism and fear that the president er and tweets and still, it makes a ton of sense for j Powell to give the economy some leeway here. here because otherwise, here I am, and this is what I'm going to be saying. They know nothing! They know nothing! I'll, I will bring that back. I will. I know it's hard for some of the more hidebound Fed governors to believe that you should ever lower rates when the consumers flush. But there's a lot more to the economy than consumer spending. I also feel like there are plenty of people in the open market committee who simply don't get the whole new economy. They don't understand how deflationary all this technology we talk about all the time on the show really is. The vast majority of companies I speak to are using the cloud to keep their costs down. The gig economy is usually deflationary. As robust as the big retailers may be, much of their strength comes at the back of mom and pop companies that can't make it and mall stores that are fighting for their lives. The numbers from L Brands, for instance, which owns Victoria's Secret, they were simply awful. I can't imagine they'll be able to keep doing the same thing. Yes, Macy's does have a similar problem, although they're doing, they're frankly doing better than L Brands. Look, you could easily argue that there's enough good here to offset the bad. Honestly, I'm not going to disagree with that. But I've done a ton of work on the trade war itself. I'm possessed by understanding where we are. And I think it would be nuts to get your hopes up about a deal anytime soon. The U.S. and China will keep trading body blows. So far, we've gotten through it with relatively little pain. Now, though, Trump is ready to ratchet things up again, and it would be foolish to believe there will be no impact when he's telling you there will be the bottom line here. When you put it all together, I think the Fed has more than enough reason to take preemptive action here and cut interest rates, maybe even aggressively, even if they've never been preemptively positive before. But, hey, they were willing to be preemptively negative a year ago. Why not try something a little more constructive, Jay? How about Steve in South Dakota, please? Steve. Hey, Jimbo, uh, I have a question regarding Molson Coors. Uh, the stock is actually trading lower than it's traded in years. Um, it seems like a lot of the problem right now is, I mean, I love Blue Moon Coors, but they don't really have the hard sells, which are very popular. Um, they got a new CEO taking over in, I think, a few weeks. Um, he seems very motivated. Do you think being the stock is so cheap right now, it's a good buy? Um, you know what? It's very interesting you mentioned about the sell, the uh, hard seltzer. I had some of that this weekend, by the way. Uh, yeah, I had some Truly. Uh, and, and I have to tell you, I, I kind of liked it. And that uh, Boston Beer, they're well ahead of everybody, including Constellation. I would rather have your own Constellation. I, that 4.4% yield is not going to help you stop anything in Molson. Constellation's doing better. I think they can write the ship in Canopy. It's going to be hard, but they'll write the ship up. Let's go. Oh, let's stick with South Dakota. What the hell? Let's go to John in South Dakota, please. John. Hey, Jim. How are you? Big booyah to you. Thank you. Hey, you know, the best part of my morning, I get up, I check the free market, grab a cup of coffee, try really hard not to wake up my wife and listen to you explain the market. Want to thank you for that. Well, you know, I love that show. I got fabulous partners. Make me look, look good every day. Let's make some money. What's going on? All right. A couple of years ago, I bought Dow DuPont, bought into the story, bought into the synergies, bought into the promises. I'm now sitting here after the split. I'm down 50 percent in Dow, 25 percent in DuPont. And I know uh, DuPont is in the is in your portfolio. Yeah. My question is, Jim, what do I do? 
Uh, I think it's too late to sell Dow now because it's got such a big yield. Jim Fitterling is going to be able to turn things around, I believe. 6.66%. I actually went for our Chapel Trust. You can follow one, by the way, if you join the ActionAlertsPlus.com club. Uh, we were talking all this week about buying more DuPont, even though this has been a very difficult and, yes, bad situation. All right. Memo to the Fed. Why not try something new and constructive? I mean, you have more than enough reasons to take preemptive action and cut rates. Give it a try. On Man Money Tonight, is the force still with Salesforce after earnings? I was sitting down with the co-CEO fresh off the report. Then my cloud primer continues with all the plays I know you want to know about, we're too afraid to ask about. And a big data player that's been on our radar screen ever since the uh, 4K came public. Uh, I tell you the truth, I think it's about to get its act together in a big way, starting with this quarter. Is it still worth considering to buy some? Well, why don't we watch and talk and find out? Stay with me. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.